and welcome everybody to the Daily Space Weather. We had a major solar flare happen just a few hours ago. We'll get into it. First, some imagery of the sun. You'll see a major brightening of this sunspot down here. That was an M-class solar flare. And the likelihood for additional solar flares remains in effect. Here's the sun in ionized iron. And we'll show some close-ups of this as well in different wavelengths. It did cause a coronal mass ejection. We'll let you know momentarily if it's expected to miss Earth or strike Earth. Here's a composite of those two wavelengths. That's ionized helium and iron, 304 and 171 angstroms. It's a heavy metal star, folks. A heavy metal star. Here's your colorized magnetogram, and we've got, I believe, four sunspot groups now. Another one has just formed right here. So major uptick in solar activity for all of those folks forecasting zero sunspots for years in a row. Looks like that's not really panning out. Here's 94 angstroms, another ionized iron spectra. It's ultraviolet light. And this is one of the best at showing solar flares. We'll even show a close-up of that. Talk about a brightening event. Again, that was an M-class solar flare. Quite significant indeed. So let's do a close-up of the southern hemisphere here. And it'll be pretty exciting. A blindingly bright X-ray flare showing up there. The largest solar flare for months. And again, the likelihood of additional large solar flares remains, folks. With this many sunspots on the visible solar disk. The radio flux has come up to 89 solar flux units. Here's a one-year chart of that. The black line is the radio flux. The red line is the sunspot number. Space weather enthusiast dashboard expecting some geomagnetic unrest later in the day today. That's from the coronal mass ejection that we indeed forecasted before September 19th and which occurred on September 19th. Global seismicity is at high levels as well. We released a possible tsunami alert yesterday, right after our daily space weather video aired because of this quake off the coast of Nicaragua. That was a 6.5 magnitude quake, and it sent off all kinds of alerts. I didn't see anything else about the tsunami alert, so we're assuming that it didn't actually trigger a tsunami. And our silver and gold level smash team members would have gotten an alert about that only minutes after it dropped. So we also see some aftershocks there. No surprise with a quake of that size. Again, that was a 6.5 magnitude. Otherwise, earthquakes not really at that high of a level. South Sandwich Islands region still shaking over the past 24 hours. Some deep quakes at places like Fiji and the Philippines those occurring more recently, just in the past few hours. La Palma has lava flowing toward the sea. Do you think a landslip uh, tsunami is going to occur here because the island's going to collapse into the ocean? Well, I don't. But in any case, I'm sure you'll hear enough videos on YouTube talking about it. Attempting to frighten people into, I don't know, purchasing bunkers or MREs. So yeah, La Palma showing additional uptick in its volcanic activity. So now it's an exploding volcano with a 10,000-foot ash plume. Another new lava flow has happened as lava flows toward the sea. Lots of people evacuated. 
And you can you can follow the sulfur dioxide concentrations on windy.com by the way. They've got a great mobile app. You can see the sulfur coming out of the island. We won't worry about it. But a bit of a volcanic uptick there with the way being led by the La Palma volcano. Karimsky exploding, producing a 17,000-foot ash plume over the Kamchatka Peninsula. Shivaluch, we're not sure if that's erupting or not. Tsubinose Jima is certainly erupting in an explosive fashion, producing a 12,000-foot ash plume. Samisa Pochnoi in the Aleutian Islands still erupting, 10,000-foot ash plume as it explodes. Popocatapetl exploding. One of my bucket list volcanoes in central Mexico, 19,000 foot ash plume there. Fuego exploding, 16,000 foot ash plume over Guatemala. Revenador volcanic ash not seen in satellite. Please don't pull Volta Caldera. Also, Sabancaya in Peru, intermittent emissions. Please don't pull Volta Caldera. No matter how silly and ridiculous society seems to be, no matter how much civilization is collapsing, if you're going through hell, keep going. That's a quote from Winston Churchill. Do not pull vault the caldera, folks. Things aren't that bad. In fact, most things in the world are better, such as our website, smashamash.com slash smash team. It's so much better than Patreon that we're going to stop posting to Patreon as of October 1st. So if you're a patron, please cancel your Patreon and become a smash team member. Thanks to our smash team members, you can find links to the merch and the smash team at smashamash.com. Showing some low readings in the GOES magnetometer here. There's a bunch of plasma headed our way both from a coronal hole wind stream and from a coronal mass ejection. Forecasted to be a glancing blow, although the coronal hole wind stream is expected to be a little bit more significant. We can expect the uptick from that in about two days, two and a half days. Anyway, that's the GOES magnetometer over the past three days measured by the GOES-16 and 17 geosynchronous orbit satellites. Let's take a look at the galactic, the galactic, the heliospheric current sheet. Earth remains in a south pole oriented current sheet. There's a bit of a tug of war going on as we have sunspots in both the northern and southern hemisphere of the sun. We'll be watching how those sunspots play out before we can do anything resembling a forecast of this. There's the latest image. You can see Earth is in a south pole current sheet. There is a north pole current sheet sort of on the way. So this is North Pole right here, and this is South Pole. And that could give us some predictive value. We won't worry about it too much at the moment. Here's a line of sight view of the same data, basically. It's from 51 ground-based magnetometers and magnetometers on stereo A and B. This also shows the solar magnetogram. Here's a line of sight coronal hole plot showing you the sun's B field in blue. Those blue potential field surface source lines are the sun's B field. And you can see that rather well-defined coronal hole there in red. That's south pole oriented. And there is a north pole one also showing through a little bit here. Right up there in the northeast there, just rising over the limb. You can see a couple pixels of it there showing up in green. And here's the closest star in 193 angstroms, a great wavelength for showing coronal holes. And you can see this, this one down here. Again, we can expect a wind stream from that a high speed geo effective type wind stream in about two and a half days. Here's the coronal mass ejection that we saw associated with that M class flare. Coronal uh, solar flare watch continues. So we've got some significant sunspots once again. And let's actually bring up the uh, detected sunspot groups imagery. So that major flare, that M-class flare, came out of sunspot 2871. 2872 and 73 are both significant sunspot groups as well. And I believe there is another sunspot group forming back here. So one of these plages here had Umbra when we did show prep. Anyway, there's that M-class flare. Peak flux was 
at 4.50 Universal Time earlier this morning, about five hours from when we recorded this video. No spikes in the proton flux there as that major flare didn't send any relativistic particles Earth's way, at least not ones that were detected by the GOES-16. No spikes in the proton flux. And let's see what's going on with the real-time solar wind. Pretty unremarkable here over the past 24 hours. Solar wind density, 9 protons per cubic centimeter approximately. Solar wind speed, 364 kilometers per second. Again, unremarkable solar wind over the past 24 hours. KP index currently at 3. That's a measurement of global geomagnetism, if you were wondering. And if you're a new viewer, congratulations on finding our channel. We've only been doing it for pushing four years. Congratulations on realizing we exist. So here's magnetohydrodynamic pressure modeled by the Space Weather Modeling Framework over the past four hours. Nothing to write home about there either. Fairly homogeneous pressure here in the geospace. Again, that's four hours of data, the Space Weather Modeling Framework. Next, ground magnetic perturbation, since there is a polar excursion going on. Since the south magnetic pole has left the Antarctic continent and is someplace down here south of Australia, we like to show this daily. Check it out. Some significant perturbations here south of South America once again, coming out of the Central Pacific Ocean. And over places like Canada. And this does give ideas of where the aurora are most likely to be seen, power outages and so on, especially during times of geomagnetic storm. Here's where things are located in the solar system. We like to show this daily as well. There's where things will be in a week on September 30th. Here's a star chart from in-the-sky.org. I face mine to the south. I'm currently facing the south. And we've drawn in the galactic plane in blue, the ecliptic plane in yellow. The moon is about halfway between its apex and setting here in Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. Today's cosmology segment will be brief, integrated into the Daily Space Weather video. Check our playlists from hundreds more cosmology segments, youtube.com slash smash -a -mash slash playlists. Today's featured random object, quote, random, and quote, object is 1006, which is galaxy 3C445, which is a safer two galaxy. Here are the hard x-rays from that galaxy over the past this is a 16-year chart, and there's the 30-day chart. We actually saw a very powerful transient from it here, which would be well off the scale, 10 times higher than these transients here. And that chart had to be expanded, that 30-day chart. You can see over the last 16 years, it's been a pretty consistent X-ray source, actually upticking a little bit here in the past couple of years. Let's take a look at some more imagery of that. How about some optical data from the PanStar survey? And we'll zoom way in. There's that Safer 2 active galactic nucleus. Let's look at some, some other wavelengths. Here's the 2 mass, the thermal emissions from that active galactic nucleus. Does it show up on the Galax? So not showing up there in UV light. Here is a false color x-ray image of it, and you can see it is quite a bright x-ray source. As we zoom out, and another pretty bright x-ray source next to it there. Again, that's today's featured, quote, random, end quote, object, Galaxy 3C445, which is number 1006 on the Neil Garrels Swift BAT X-ray Observatory. It stands for Burst Alert Telescope. A lot of objects out there are being monitored for their X-ray outputs. It's also known as LEDA 68751. And we want today's cosmology segment to be pretty brief as it's integrated to the Daily Space Weather video. Here's an image from uh, Rhode Island, from Saunders Town. It's a time-lapse image of the moon. Yeah, the full moon, the most recent full moon here was the harvest moon. The September full moon. And that's time-lapse photography there, folks. From Rhode Island, it's the astronomy picture of the day. You can find it yourself at apod.nasa.gov if you are so inclined. Let's take a look at charging hazards. We do see some minor charging hazards here, surface charging hazards, over places like Central America, the Western Caribbean, 
Southern Mexico about to move into the Central Pacific Ocean there. Some minor charging hazards for satellites there. Here's the one-year chart of the relativistic electrons. Yes, Earth is surrounded by relativistic electrons. Electrons moving at nearly the speed of light. They're the greater than 2 mega electron volt electrons. There is the one-year chart from Solon.info of those. Here's a three-day chart of the greater than or equal to 2 mega electron volt electron flux measured by the GOES-16 and GOES-17. Moderate levels now. And here's the forecast model. The green boxes are the forecast. The yellow diamonds are the observation. Expecting an uptick, although when we see a coronal mass ejection or coronal whole wind stream strike, we expect to see this dip as a result of the incoming protons. Here's a diagram of Earth's Van Allen belts. Feel free to pause the video. Distances are shown here in miles. And now we're showing the total electron content forecast. This gives you an idea of where GPS errors are most likely to occur, as well as anomalies in Earth's Van Allen belts. It's showing the total electron content between a, geo a GPS satellite, a geosynchronous satellite, and your location on the ground. And it often gives us insight into anomalies in the magnetosphere when we see chaos happening, disorganized bands of electron belts things looking pretty normal at the moment. Here's another diagram of the atmosphere showing you where the F ionosphere layer is. It's located at about 300 kilometers of altitude. Here's a slice, the F ionosphere slice, in vibrational frequency. And we're seeing mostly high frequency anomalies at the moment, having just begun fall or spring if you're in the southern hemisphere. Shout out to our viewers from Munda. There's the most current image, 9 o'clock universal time. Here's the anomaly map. This is departure from the 30-day median in megahertz. You're seeing mostly high-frequency anomalies here, especially south of the equator. Some low-frequency anomalies as well north of the equator, mainly over places like the Atlantic Ocean and the Central Pacific. Here's the latest image. That's 9 o'clock universal time. Things looking not all that abnormal at that moment. And we're about to get into bonus features. I would remind our viewers that we are also on BitChute. Thanks to our BitChute subscribers. Congratulations on finding the videos on YouTube as this video was not on BitChute. Again, we're also on Twitch, twitch.tv slash smashamash. If you're viewing this video, chances are you can follow us on Twitch as well. Thanks to our new followers over there. Thanks to our subscribers over on YouTube. And thanks, YouTube, so much for having such a fair and transparent platform. We really appreciate all of the uh, mysterious views and lack thereof and mysterious monetization and lack thereof and all of that sort of inconsistency and inability uh, to apparently write code that functions. Congratulations, YouTube. You have jumped the shark with your pathetic joke of junkware known as the YouTube platform. You're paying millions of dollars to people who are lying to their viewers, promoting fraud and disinformation, and you're withholding funding from our channel. So congratulations on that. Thanks to our patrons who've been the true source of funding up until the month of Smash Timber. And welcome to Smash Timber, by the way. It's been an incredible month for smashamash.com. Welcome to the Neo Renaissance. Here's a tidbit of what goes on at smashamash.com slash smash team. Gold and silver members see stuff nobody else gets to see, which is why they're paying a monthly fee to have access to the content. We also put up great imagery like this, and somehow I doubt you'll find these sorts of posts anyplace else. If you're new to the Smash team, if you've just enrolled, click on Posts from whatever screen you're on, <clears throat> and you'll see the latest post. It's just vastly superior to Patreon. We don't dislike Patreon, it's just that we needed additional abilities. Smashamash.com has all the links. Welcome to the Neo Renaissance. Once again, congratulations on realizing we exist. If you'd like these videos to continue to exist, please support us by becoming a member of the Smash team. Patrons, cancel your Patreon before October 1st. Don't get charged again and become Smash Team members. There are only two tiers, $2.99 and $9.99 per month. There's also a paid-up option. If you'd like some exclusive merch, like what I'm wearing right now,
In 2018, a crack YouTube unit was sent to social media prison for a crime we didn't commit. We promptly escaped a maximum security social media stockade into the Internet underground where we survive as producers of fortune. If you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can find our channel, maybe you can hire the Smash Team. Don't forget to check our merch as well. We've listed it in order of best selling. Make America not suck again. It's up to you. Make Earth not suck again. It's up to you. Fraud. Intentional misrepresentation of material facts. Are you accountable? Are you accountable? Universum Liberate. Here come our bonus features. It's the El Taide ground based observatory in Spain. As we see another significant solar uptick, let's take a look at the solar intensity gram. There's a the latest refresh. Here's the latest refresh of a magnetogram. And we see at least one major sunspot group there. That's capable of producing major flares. This group has already produced an M-class flare, so obviously it's still capable. This group here is capable of producing major flares as well. And we see a new group forming right here. So we're holding steady here at four sunspot groups. We were actually up to six there. I don't think they all got named. There actually was a moment where there are five named groups. There's the latest one anyway. Yeah, pretty serious activity here. Here's the last 24 hours in two different wavelengths. It's 1,600 and 1,700 angstroms. Great imagery there. Here's 171 angstroms, that same region, the northern hemisphere. Oh, we've got more. Don't worry. Don't you worry, folks. There's more. Here's the southern hemisphere. You'll actually see a sudden brightening there. The sun performing nuclear fusion right there on its surface before your eyes. Those bright areas, those are ionized carbon likely being made at the moment of the flare, or associated with the moment of the flare at least. And we'll close out today's daily space weather video on the southern hemisphere in my favorite wavelength, 171 angstroms. Again, there was a coronal mass ejection produced by that. It does not appear to be Earth-facing. It appears to be in a trajectory well to the south of the Earth line. Once again, congratulations on realizing our channel exists, and may that solar wind be at your back.